Last time I made a presentation, I think I ended up with a reputation of a plumber. I'm not sure what I'll end up with after today, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, this presentation has allowed me to start to reflect on the, the sort of last three years I've been involved with the Budget Strengthening Initiative in South Sudan, but also a bit longer in terms of, of how you know, being involved in the provision of technical assistance and, and sort of uh, my sort of take on what works and what hasn't worked. Uh, and uh, and so uh, so hopefully I'll be able to sort of share some 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 thoughts and I hopefully this presentation is real as well that, that 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 it will touch on some real sort of sort of issues and the practical experiences that some of you may have had ha, had in the field. Uh, so I'm going to start or I'm going to sort of talk about sort of three main things. I'm going to first sort of talk about sort of. Uh, about the the potential reformer, not everyone who's a, who's a potential reformer ends up being a reformer. But uh, but 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 what sort of my experience of the people uh, sort of who end up being reformers uh, in Ministry of Finance and the problems they face uh, and uh, from different dimensions uh, and uh, and then talk about uh, the someone I'm calling the trusted advisor, where I've I've seen especially in, uh, in sort of early reform context, the importance of, 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 of reformers having a trusted advisor to call on. And then, uh, and then my take on, 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 on what problem solving actually means in the, in the provision of techni technical assistance uh, and, and reform. So, sorry, sorry I moved a bit closer. Okay. So let me... Uh, let me start uh, start by talking about the uh, the potential reformer. And in my experience, there are always potential reformers in the Ministry of Finance. Uh, I'm not talking about the champions, the the sort of the leaders, the, the dynamic minister. Uh, and uh, you know, in Uganda, we had the uh, Tumasimi Mutabilis of this world, who are the drivers of a lot of reform. For me, I'm talking about the middle-level managers who are interested in making change, who actually, actually are the people who, who, who deliver the reforms. Uh, champions at the higher level may create the space for reforms, but it's the middle-level managers uh, who actually get the job done. Uh, uh, these people may not be in a position of influence yet, but they may end up in a position of, uh, of influence. Uh, yeah, and they are, but they are the people who do get things done. And whether it's, you know, I've, I've worked in places, but Uganda is where I grew up and learnt my uh, trade uh, alongside alongside Kenneth. Uh, and uh, and but I've seen reformers in Baluchistan and in South Sudan, where I've been spending a lot of uh, my time in the last the last the last three years. Uh, so. Reformers face some real problems, uh, and sort of these sort of are the types of things that someone like a director budget might face in a in a sort of post-conflict situation, uh, and and basically you're in a very uh, uncertain environment. You face some political problems. Uh, you know, you may wake up one morning and hear on the news that army salaries have been increased by 50%, which happened in, in South Sudan. You get pressures from, uh, you know, from politicians saying that this road must be built, the president must travel tomorrow, MPs saying, where is the money for my area? Uh, you know, politicians in parliament saying, we don't need the IMF, why are we, why are we agreeing to these conditions? Uh, you know, people, you know, an MP saying, you know, the president promised that we had a, had a classroom, going to have a classroom built. Uh, you know, you are also subject to, to ex, you know, external interests. I know people in the Uganda Ministry of Finance and in the South Sudan Ministry of Finance where someone, you know, will come to, uh, you know, to your, to your desk, you're a, you're a, you're a, you're a budget officer or, a, or an accounts person, and someone puts a gun down on your desk and says, I want my, how can I have my budget or how can I have my money? And I've heard that story in two. And, you know, as advisors, we don't, 
deal. We don't have to deal with these these types of problems, but we have to. I mean, my point here is is all about understanding, you know, the pressures that are you know that are the that the people we're working with actually actually face, and a lot of these issues are are, are you know, are personal. Uh, you know, it's a, it's it's around. You know, my child is sick. You know, a lot of our colleagues. You know, they're on civil service salaries. They have to pay school fees, and you know we complain. Why are these people, you know, traveling all the time? You know, a lot of a lot of you know a lot of it is around. You know, you have to get money to pay your children's fees, and their private interests are you know um, personal interests are, are quite important. We need to understand this rather than being being quick 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 to judge. But I mean, I think the main point is, you know, reformers want to make make a change, but they're in a very, very difficult situation from lots of different dimensions. And we often forget that, and we often expect, expect too much. So the reformer faces, faces real problems from lots of different uh, uh, dimensions, and also has lots of people trying to help. Uh, and, uh, and we'll go into this on my next slide, but someone like uh, like Kenneth is a seasoned person, he's been dealing with this, and he can, he, he, he can deal with it. But an early reformer, you're just coming out of conflict, the floodgates have opened, the international community comes in, and they're all saying different things. You know, someone saying we must centralize procurement, another one is saying decentralization procurement, you must have an MTEF, you must have, a, have a performance measures in your budget, you must... Uh, uh, you know, you must move to a single treasury account now. Or you must have a separate bank account for uh, for for the education sector. It's just white noise. There are just so many different elements of of uh, uh, you know so many different pieces of advice being bombarded on these on these reformers. Uh, so uh, so they're just lots of different different messages, and a lot of this these messages. Are here. On the one hand, you're being asked to go to a conference. Uh, everyone's asking you to go to a different conference, and then another person is complaining, "Why is then that, that someone from the Ministry of Finance never here?" And there's all these conflicting uh, incentives. And you know, we have this thing called the New Deal. Everyone's saying, "Well, we have to use uh, government systems," and then donors on the ground are saying, "Well, there's no way we can use government systems." All these sort of conflicting messages are coming in. How do you navigate? How do you navigate through? And, 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 you know, and for an early reformer, it's a, it's a lot more difficult. If I take, a, take an established reformer, like, uh, uh, you know, someone in a country like Uganda or Mozambique, you know, I could take a, take a, a Kenneth, for example. You're in a relatively stable, uh, stable environment, uh, whilst... You know, a situation like South Sudan, the, the 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 environment is very very unpredictable. You have decisions being made by by cabinet which are, which will have budgetary implications with no discipline. You're you're not. It's very difficult to navigate. Whilst in Uganda, you kind of know the problems that are there. Uh, you know, an sort of a, a and an established report reformer will have a sort of a long experience of of dealing with external support. But uh, but uh, but in, uh, sort of a lot of the senior staff in South Sudan were either brought in from outside and have had no experience of external advice, or were cut off from external advice and were sort of sort of administrators or or in the army and had no sort of experience of dealing with external actors. Uh, and as I, you know, as I hinted at, uh, someone who's been sort of working in a ministry of finance with external support for a long time can basically. Uh, identify advice that might be relevant to him, to, to him or her, relative to the uh, uh, relative to the white noise or the conflicting advice, and they can actually see that this piece of advice may be good. But 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 an early reformer may actually find it difficult to identify the sound advice that responds to uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 those prob to those problems. Uh, and also, I find the early reformers are eager to trust. All the all the advice that is that is that is that is that is, that is given that you these people are here to help so they must be saying the right thing, uh, and 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 you know but a lot of what they're being told is nonsense, so uh, 
so it's it's you know they're in a difficult position and also you know someone like to go back to Kenneth he has an institution below him with capacity so he has an ability to act on advice and implement it whilst often in a in a fragile states conflict con context the institution the capability of the institution to use that word may be, the, the, the reformer has may, is, is is likely to be far less and you're far less able to uh, uh, to basically implement the advice uh, that, that has been or, or act on the advice that has been provided but my experience of reformers is they do know the problems they face they understand why the problems they face are there but you know in a in a in a early reformer a sort of post-conflict situation the reformers find it very very difficult to navigate either through the advice or or, or to to, uh, to to sort of see their way through the problems that they face because they're coming from different directions. It's very difficult to say, see where to start. And then that means they're often very frustrated as well because it's like, what can I do? I want to do something, but what can I, what can I do about the situation that I, that I faced? I mean, a lot of this is, uh, these are gross generalizations, but I just wanted to make the contrast of, the, of these situations. So let me go on to the, the, the trusted advisor. And as I said before, in a, in a sort of in an early reform context or a fragile state like South Sudan, you know, but even early in the Uganda reforms, did see the uh, the importance of 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 a of there being trusted advisors uh, in supporting the reformers that are there. Uh, and uh, and saying a trusted advisor, what I'm trying to say is that relationships matter. Okay, it's a very intangible thing. But, but some people are able to build relationships and some people aren't. And it would be very difficult, easy to try and box this and say, well, this, you know, all you have to do is have a good relationship. But, but so what I'm going to try and do is trying to sort of unpack this, this person, this, this person called the trusted, the trusted uh, advisor. I think the most important thing is, is this person listens. Uh, and uh, and tries to understand the situation that is there and and the problems facing <coughs> their colleague that they're trying to support or the colleagues they're trying to support. Uh, and I think that's the most the most crucial thing is, is that one is not that 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 one needs to to listen and understand the the situation that that uh, that, that, that that the reformer finds himself in. And importantly, that the person is is reliable. He or she respects the decisions made by, uh, by the reformer. You may not always agree with those decisions, but this person is the boss, is your boss. You may not agree with every, all the decisions that are made, but you need to understand and back up those decisions even if, even if you don't necessarily agree with them. And you also need to work through the bureaucracy you know, a lot of us get very excited that, you know, that, you, that when you go and talk to the minister or talk to the senior people, but ultimately the key thing is to, to get things delivered is, is not the bosses, not talking to these important people because they forget anyway these conversations after they've had them, is working through the, the lower and middle level bureaucracy uh, and working through the reform process uh, 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 or, or working through the implementation of a system but respecting the bureaucracy that is there because working through the bureaucracy helps build, build, build ownership and build uh, the sustainability of reform. Importantly, uh, the reformer breaks the problem, uh, problem down and helps, helps, uh, you know, helps the sort of their, their, their colleagues navigate through the reform, uh, through the, uh, uh, through through the advice that, uh, that, that has been provided and also through the helping solve the problems. Uh, and, uh, and it's important of drawing lessons from any mistakes that are made rather than judging and complaining about the mistakes. It's more drawing lessons from them. And also importance of, of respecting the confidentiality and, and, and the confidence that is provided to them in, in, in this relationship. 
So that's sort of some of the features I've seen of trusted advisors. There may be some in the room back there, uh, and uh, and uh, but there are, these individuals are quite quite important. Uh, but it's important to say that trust takes time to build. You can't just swan in and start providing advice and be a trusted advisor. This this takes a long time to build, and we're not talking about the trusted advisor being a, a replacement for sort of conventional technical assistance in terms of developing systems and capacity development. But this is, uh, uh, which is an important uh, sort of addition to this. But one of the things, again, that I've seen is that this works best when other sort of advisors and TA understand that this, this, this trusted advisor is in a position of trust uh, uh, and then works through them rather than tries to undermine them. OK, so that's a trusted advisor. So now I want to go. And, and look at, uh, give three examples of problem solving in practice. Now, I probably need to add, to, I could probably talk to sort of for half an hour on each of these slides, in each of these examples. Yeah, so I need to be, I need to be, uh, to be held to account for time. You so. anticipate it. Yes, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> for five minutes. Okay. So, uh, uh, but I've got, but, uh, but basically I've got sort of three, three examples. One is, is about, facilitating a reform process. And the other two are about implementing core processes. And basically, the way, way I've seen reform processes work, are uh, it's, you know, reform processes are not a linear. Uh, they're, they're not linear. We like to have a reform plan with lots of actions and predict everything beforehand. But, but it doesn't work like that. And we need to recognize that, that it doesn't work like that. So one of the, this example here is in, in, in South Sudan, uh, two or three years ago, the, uh, the, the director of aid coordination, a man called Moses, who some of you may know, he's quite a distinctive man, he's about six foot five tall, uh, and, uh, but he was very concerned about, uh, uh, you know, about wanting aid to use gov government system. Basically, the donors in South Sudan are all channeling their funds for service delivery through NGOs. And he says, why, you know, was, why, uh, you know, we want, uh, uh, we want, uh, we want, this short term was we want budget support. And then the donors, conversations with the donors were saying, absolutely no chance. And so we had this intractable problem of the government effectively wanted to, to sort of donors to support, support their service delivery, and the donors were miles off. So we started effectively with this, this problem, and one of the first C key, and unpacking that problem, one of the first elements was that, uh, that basically there were no, that, that local governments were responsible for service delivery in the constitution, but there were no, uh, there were no PFM systems down at the local, local level. And therefore, that was a key element of donor fiduciary risk. So the first question was, how do we manage risk and strengthen local PFM. And that was the first problem that this process sort of uh, dealt with. And then as that went along, you know, one of the, the, the second set of sort of problems involved, well, PFM is only one thing, but they actually need a clear policy for service delivery, for, for, for delivering health services, for delivery ed education services. And so that, that, that sort of pro second problem kind of emerged uh, uh, and was dealt with. And, and as these problems came on one by one, uh, a, a set of coordination processes involving the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education was sort of was established uh, and, uh, and a sort of a group looking at local PFM. And we had a set of problems that started growing, but a set of processes to address them. Uh, and part of this involved core systems. But this conversation meandered along. The next set of questions were around we have no, you know, we have no systems for finance or channels for financing local governments. We're now developing a PFM system, but we need to work out the plumbing of how to finance them. And then that problem was addressed. And then, then the next set of problems were around human resources and uh, and human resource management in terms of service delivery uh, was another key set of problems. So, so basically, if we started off with all these set of problems at the beginning, it would be very difficult to to, to address them all at the same time. But Unpacking one problem led to another. And uh, 2013, where we are at the moment, is we have a joint government-led coordination process across, across sectors. 
but one involving the Ministry of Public Service, one involving finance and, and, and then the sector ministries to address some of these problems and a joint plan of action signed by these, 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 these six, six ministries to address some of the common problems that emerged. We have a, a local government PFM system being rolled out and also uh, act, so different donors are, uh, are, are funding different elements of the capacity development program. We have a new set of transfers for health education and capacity development designed and $100 million allocated in this budget year from the government budget to, uh, to, to, to service delivery. And, uh, uh, and we have, uh, have, have donor projects using government systems starting this year and two donors, which I was very surprised about, planning to provide budget support this year. Uh, and, uh, and so, but all this started with a, with a problem very different to the kind of one problem, very different, and I wouldn't have predicted the problem we started with ending with the result that, that, that we have had. But sort of what are the, what are the, some of the key issues? We've, we had a, a reformer, a guy called Moses. There was someone who built and became a trusted advisor. I, he's called Emmanuel. He's in the corner over there. But we also, the, the role of external actors was, was to, uh, uh, and what Emmanuel did a very good job, was helping break the problem down and helping facilitate uh, uh, the solutions and facilitating a process of finding the solutions uh, and then learning and adapting as we went, went along uh, and importantly linking to this talk about collective action problems the process was collaborative it brought different actors to the table I've probably taken five minutes on that slide <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway so two more two more two more slides maybe I'll race over these yeah, quite yes, quickly yeah. so uh, so here I have two, two examples of, of <laughs> establishing core systems. One which was, un was relatively unsuccessful in the short term, which was around budget execution. One of the key issues in South Sudan, and it is still the key issue, is the credibility of the budget and budget execution. And really what this story says is, is, uh, is, is that the, the, the technical solution that was offered by external advice was not was relevant to the problem in terms it was meant to address, uh, address uh, budget execution, but it wasn't aligned to the capacity that was there. So the black line here is that the sort of level of sophistication of, of the system and the yellow line is the capacity. And the key point here was that although uh, those sort of external support helped set up a system, it was not aligned to the capacity and the capability of the Ministry of Finance that was there. And it also didn't wasn't entirely relevant to the problem. It, it addressed the sort of technical aspects of the problem, but not the key politics of why budget execution was what was a problem. And so we're in a situation two years down the line where we're having to sort of reset and, and lower the sophistication of, of, of the reforms, break them down more, and also explicitly try and address the political nature of the problem. Okay? And that's, that's, the, that's what this uh, slide is trying to say. And then we have uh, an alternative example, which was supporting the budget process uh, and the budget formulation process. And here, although not entirely, the, the development of the core systems and processes more closely match the capability of the, uh, of, 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 of the, of the, of the, the department in the Ministry of Finance. And therefore, it would be more successful at building capacity Alongside the, the uh, alongside developing and deploying the system. So, in this example, basically advisors ended up running the budget execution system very badly because it's very difficult to do so, and it ended up in a mess. In this example, we we basically been a bit more successful in in building and sort of making systems more sophisticated over time and building capacity at the same time. But, but, but one of the complaints about advice in, in, in external assistance in fragile states is they all too often end up doing too much doing and not enough capacity building. And I think part of the issues is we start by, by implementing two systems which are too sophisticated, don't necessarily address the real problems, and then you end up scrabbling around trying to run the system, uh, ending up running the system rather than building sustainable capacity. Okay, so just 30 seconds. Yeah. In conclusion, 
we have that. So we have, we talk, I've talked about the potential reformer, and I think it's important <laughs> that you know, we understand that these people are always there, but just need to be, need to be supported. And, you know, and, and we, talk, we need to not focus our, our, our attention too much on the senior people, the ministers, the permanent secretaries, but deal with these middle-level people who can drive through reform. Relationships matter, and in the provision of TA, having people who can build relationships with their, with their counterparts, understand where they're coming from, are important. And then, yeah, and then problem solving uh, is, I mean, I think problem solving, we all can, can say that we've solved, we take a problem solving approach, but I think the important thing is about understanding the real nature of the problem and addressing the problems, those, that, that real nature rather than the generic problem.